Adam, this video is for you. We are going to find a Taylor series for ln x centered at a is equal to 2. So as you can see, we are ready because we have this table. n goes from 0 to 4. I think that should be enough. And then right here, we have the nth derivative column and then the Taylor formula. Be sure you plug in 2 right here because the question says so. And now let's just get to work. For the 0th derivative of the function, it is just the original. So we'll put down the ln x right here. And we just have to differentiate this four times. The derivative of ln x is first 1 of x, right? And let me write that down as x to the negative 1 power because this is easier for me to get to the next derivative. For the next derivative, we bring the power to the front, so we have negative 1, and then we minus 1, so we have x to the negative 2. And let's keep going. Next one, we bring the power to the front, so we have negative 1 times negative 2. We have positive 2, and then minus 1, so we have x to the negative 3. And then one more time, 2 times negative 3, we get negative 6, and then minus 1 to the power, so we have x to the negative 4, like this. And now, we are going to plug in 2 into all these x values, and then divide it by the n factorial according to these n values. Taylor told us to do that, the Taylor formula. For the first one, let me plug in 2 into the ln x, so we have ln 2 over 0 factorial. And by definition, 0 factorial is just 1, so here we will have ln 2 only. Next one, plug in 2 into here, so we have 2 to the negative 1 power over 1 factorial, right here. And now let me simplify this a little bit because we can totally write 2 to the negative 1 power as 1 over 2, right? And then the 1 factorial in the denominator doesn't really do anything. So for this right here, we have 1 over 2. Next one, we plug in 2 into this x. This is negative 1 in front, so we have negative. And then we just open the parentheses, 2 into this x, and then raise to the negative 2 power. And then we divide it by 2 factorial. Right, so now let's do this carefully. On the top, we have negative 1 because I'm going to bring this down to the denominator. So let me put down negative 1 on the top over, and then let's see the 2 factorial. 2 factorial means 2 times 1, which will just end up with a 2, right? So 2 factorial is this 2 in black. And now, 2 to the negative 2 power, we know that's 1 over 2 squared. And let me just write it down as how it is. I'm not going to multiply it out. Let me just put this down in the denominator as 2 to the second power. Okay? We will see a pattern uh, this way, much better. And now we'll do it for the next one. Plugging 2 into this x, so we will have this 2 in the front, and then we open the parentheses, the 2 is into the x, and then raise to the negative 3 power over 3 factorial. Right. So now, let's see. We are going to first simplify the numbers in black. This is 2. This is 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1. This is pretty much just a 6. 2 over 6 is 1 over 3. So 2 over 3 factorial, we can just put down a 3 in the denominator. Once again, this is 2 over 6, which is 1 over 3. And then for this part, I'm just going to do what I did earlier. I will bring this. 2 to the negative 3 power into the denominator and write it as 2 to the positive 3 power. And now there's nothing on the top. Technically, it's just a 1. So, 1 over 3 times 2 to the third power. And then let's do it again for the next one. We plug in 2 into this x, so we will have negative 6, and then open the parentheses, plug in 2 into here, raise to the negative 4 power over 4 factorial, all right, let's simplify the numbers in black. We have, let's just look at the 6 over 4 factorial. 4 factorial means 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is a 24. 6 over 24 is 1 over 4. So 6 over 4 factorial is just a 4 in the denominator. And then technically on the top, it's a negative. And then I'm about to bring this to the denominator. So we have negative 1 on the top. 2 to the negative 4, I will bring that down right here, becomes 2 to the positive 4. And now, can we see a pattern? I think so, right? 
Because as you can see, for example right here, when n is equal to 4, we have this 4 in the denominator, and then we also have 2 to the 4th power, right? That's very nice. And you have the 4, 3, 2, technically right here. If we would like, we can definitely put down 1. Anyways, you see all this 1, 2, 3, 4, and then also the power 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 4, and things like that. And they are alternating positive, negative, positive, negative. I'm talking about just these. The first one is just L2 is weird. But then for the fractions, they are alternating, and then they have a nice pattern. Anyways, this is the answer now. For L1x, the Taylor series expansion at a is equal to 2. It's the following. We first write down the constant term, which is ln2. And then I'm going to write down this, which is plus 1 over 1 times 2. Let me just write it down. That's how it is. This is the coefficient for x minus 2 to the first power. Be sure you have this part as well. And then for the next one, we have negative 1, so that will be a minus 1 over 2 times 2 to the second power, and this is going to be multiplied with x minus 2 to the second power, because that's when n is equal to 2. And then for the next one, we will have positive, so we will be a plus, and let me just write it down right here, if you don't mind, because I run out of space, almost. So, 1 over 3 times 2 to the third power, times x minus 2 to the third power, and then the next one is minus 1 over 4 times 2 to the 4th power, and we multiply with x minus 2 raised to the 4th power, and this right here keeps on going forever, right? This is the first 5 non-zero terms. But now let's also put this in the sigma notation. Alright, so this is how we are going to do it. First, as you can see, the ln2 is like by itself, because it's not a fraction, it does nothing to any of this. So let me just write down the ln2 all the way in the front. And then we are going to add it with, let's focus on this part, okay? So for this part, this is when n is equal to 1, when n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3, n is equal to 4, and so on. I'm going to use a sigma notation. When n goes from 1, well, it's not just to 4, because it keeps on going forever. 1 to infinity. And then, let's look at the formula. As you can see, we have positive 1, negative 1, positive, negative, and so on. So it's alternating. We must have the factor, negative 1 to some power. Is it n or n minus 1? It depends. The first term is positive, so we will have n minus 1, because n starts with 1. When you're plugging 1 into this n, we get negative 1 to the 0th power, so we do have the positive 1 to begin with. So be careful on what's our starting n value. And then next, we are going to divide it by, as you can see, when n is 1, we have the 1 right here. When n is 2, we have the 2 right here. So in general, when you have n here, you will have n here, so we'll put on n right here. And then we also have something else in the denominator, the 2 to the nth power. Right, for example, when n is equal to 4, we have 2 to the 4th power. So right here, I'll put down 2 to the nth power. And then we also have the x minus 2 raised to the nth power. So this right here is the form of the Taylor series expansion for ln x centered d at 2. Okay? And then right here, there's one more piece of the information that we have to include, which is the radius of convergence of this. And let me just tell you, the r in this case is equal to 2. You can try with the ratio test on this form right here, and you will end up with r is equal to 2. Or you can watch my next video. I am going to show you how to do that as well. But at the moment, that's it.